If you've never taken one of my courses before, you're in for a treat. Today, I'm sharing a full lesson from my brand new course, Figma for Motion Designers. This lesson dives into one of Figma's most powerful features, auto layout. It'll give you a taste of what this course is all about and why Figma is becoming more and more popular in the design industry. But that's not all. I'm still celebrating the course launch and for the rest of November, you can take 20% off the full price. Plus, if you join now, you'll get access to an exclusive 35 minute bonus lesson where I dive deeper into Figma's component system and give you a sneak peek at UX protocol prototyping, which is what my next Figma course will be all about. Stick around, enjoy the lesson, and if you like what you see, check out the course linked in the description. Auto layout is one of the most powerful features in Figma, and I think it's a standout feature for designers and why they love using this app so much. What it allows you to do is create responsive layouts of elements within your designs, a lot like a website behaves. If you were to open a website in a browser and change the width of it so that it's the full width of your monitor and then all the way down to the size of maybe a phone screen, you're gonna notice all these different elements repositioning and resizing, and in some cases even completely disappearing or adapting to the width of your browser, and that's exactly what auto layout allows you to do inside of Figma. So let's take a look at how it works in this video. And then in the next lesson, we're gonna create something a little bit more complicated using auto layout. So what we have is a grid of icons and these are all manually placed. There's nothing dynamic about them, but let's say that you wanted to be able to reposition them dynamically based on the size of their container. So right now they're just groups. They're not inside a frame at all, but if I select all of them and I right click on any of them, I can come down to add auto layout. And an auto layout is just a frame with the auto layout switch enabled. Now the keyboard shortcut for this is shift A. That's something you're gonna be doing a lot inside of Figma. So just go ahead and memorize that one, shift A to add an auto layout. So I'm gonna press shift A now, and the icons are going to reposition a little bit. So let's talk about what just happened. First of all, in the hierarchy, you'll see that we have frame one. We have a different icon than a frame though. This is the icon for the parent frame that's holding this. What's the difference? Well, this one has an auto layout. It's even called an auto layout. So if we take a look over here in the properties panel, we see an auto layout section and an icon that matches that icon. So if I click this off, it's back to being just a standard frame. So any frame can become an auto layout with that switch. But if you make a selection, you press shift A, it just adds the frame and automatically turns on auto layout. You also notice that my frame is sized to the icon within it, so it's a container that's automatically sized to those icons. But why did it move some of the icons a little bit? Well, it's because their positions are now being driven by whatever we have set up in our auto layout properties. So let's take a look at what we have over here. First, we have a width and a height for the auto layout frame. So they're fixed values at this point, and they're just, like I said, sized to the contents. But this one on the right, it says hug. So if I open this up, you'll see it's set to hug contents. That means the height of this frame is always going to be sized to whatever is contained within it. It's going to adapt to the contents and hug the contents so that it's always automatically sized for that. So if I grab this frame and I click and drag on the right side, you'll notice these icons are being rearranged to fit the container. And the height is going to adapt based on how many rows of icons there actually are. Let me undo so we're back to a square or close to it and just move my mouse around here and you'll notice all of these magenta highlights showing up. This is for the spacing between icons and rows of icons. And they correspond to other properties in this panel. So if I hover my mouse over this, it's the horizontal gap between objects. We can see that same magenta highlight. Over here we have the vertical gap, and then we have padding values. We'll get to that in a minute. But if I just interactively click and drag right here, we're going to adjust the even spacing between all of the icons in this auto layout, and the frame is going to adapt to that size change. Same thing for this control right here. This is the vertical spacing between rows. So we're seeing that value change. I could change it here as well. So that's what those two controls do. But these three controls will make drastic changes to how this auto layout is working. When you make an auto layout, Figma is going to try and intelligently guess at what you're trying to do. And since my icons were already arranged in a four by four grid, it knew that I probably wanted my auto layout set to wrap, where the icons are going to go to the width of the size of the container and then wrap around and go to the next, which is why they move around and rearrange as the width of the frame changes. But if I just wanted a horizontal row, I could change this to being a horizontal auto layout. And they're going to spill outside the width of the frame now. If I just move this around, let me grab the frame, you can see that all of my icons are now one row 
horizontally laid out and the spacing between them is going to be even. You could even put this to a negative number if you wanted, but they're all just dynamically positioned on that one axis now. I could do the same thing for a vertical layout. If I switch it, now they're all going to be vertically aligned and give me that control on just the vertical axis. Let's undo and go back to our horizontal and take a look at our width and height for this frame again, because obviously these icons are not being contained within it anymore. So let's take a look at the height. That's still set to hug. So no matter what size these icons are, the height of this frame is always going to match it. So if I were to double click in here, hold shift and click and drag, you'll see that the container is going to automatically resize with the size of that content. If I undo that and we take a look at the width of this frame, it's set to fixed width, meaning just a hard value of 502 pixels. But if I change this to hug contents, then it's going to again adapt to the width of the contents within that frame. Since they're both set to hug, I can switch between vertical and horizontal and the width and height will always match the contents now. Let's go ahead and move this back to wrap and then change the size of the frame. So if I click and drag down here, that's going to take hug contents off of both the width and height. So I could type in a value of say 480 by 480 and now I have a square container, but my icons are not being contained within it. So why exactly is that? Well, it's because based on the size of the contents and the spacing values, this amount of icons actually cannot fit within the content. So if you ever wanted to, you could clip the content just by checking on this checkbox so you don't see those extra icons that are spilling outside of your container size. I don't need to do that though. I just need to adjust my spacing so that I can fit all of those icons in the same space. All right, so now let's talk about how we can align these icons within this auto layout, because right now they're all just being aligned to the left edge and it's not exactly the look that I'd want. I'd much rather have all of the icons aligned to their edges. So the top icons are at the top of the frame, bottom icons are on the bottom, right to the right of the frame. And we can do that with this section of our auto layout controls. This is the alignment. So if I click in the center, all of my icons are centered now and are based on the center points of their groups which is a step in the right direction, but not exactly what I wanted. I want the right icons here, the left icons there, top and bottom. To do that, I need to come to my spacing and change it from a fixed value to an automatic value. And when I did that, you'll see that my alignment has changed to a different icon. I'm gonna move this back up to the center and you'll see that all three of these are now blue. You can actually switch between auto and a hard value just by double clicking here as well. So that's a quicker way to do that. The problem is now more than four icons are fitting inside each row. And because I have this set to auto, I can't adjust the spacing between these individually. If I did that, it's no longer gonna be set to auto. And I could change the vertical gap to also be auto and that will push those top and bottom rows to the top and bottom of my frame, but I'm still having that same issue of not having four icons in each row. And that's really just due to the fact that these icons are not all the exact same widths. Like you can see this one is much skinnier. And again, I don't wanna increase the spacing manually because then we lose our alignment on the right edge. So we've gotta use a different technique to have that level of control to get four icons across and four icons vertically. So what I need to do is break this grid up into individual rows that have the number of icons that I want to be in each row. So what I'll do is come over to my hierarchy and make a selection of the first four. I'll press Shift A to add an auto layout and let's call the first frame grid and this new frame, we'll call this row one. And then I'll do that for the remaining group. So the next four objects, I'll call that row two. Four more icons, Shift A, row three, and then the last four, shift A, row four. Now, Figma tried to guess what I was trying to do, but with all the auto layout craziness, it just made a jumbled mess. What I need to do is make a selection of all four of those auto layouts, make sure that they're switched to being a horizontal layout. So I just switched it to vertical and back to horizontal. I wanna make sure the width is not set to fixed width or hug contents. There's a new option here, fill container. And this is only an option when you have elements within an auto layout. So this grid is an auto layout, but the parent frame is not an auto layout. So the grid does not have that as an option. I cannot set this to fill container, but if I grab all of these auto layouts that are within an auto layout, I can change that to fill container and then go into the height and change that from hug contents to fill container as well. Now what I can do is go back to the parent grid auto layout and change it from being a wrapped layout to being a vertical layout. And now I have 
four rows of four icons each, and I just need to work with their spacing a little bit. So let's grab all four of those one more time. And on the alignment, let's align them to the center, but then double click to auto align that spacing so that they fill the width of the container like we have set here on the width. Now we have a dynamic grid frame. So if I click and drag this, the spacing is always going to automatically adjust to the size of the container, no matter how big or small, it can even overlap, but it's going to allow us to have that dynamic spacing that we were after when creating all of these auto layouts. So auto layouts can live within auto layouts and they work really well together. You just have to be aware of where to modify certain properties. So break it up into individual groups if you need to, but take advantage of those auto layout controls to get what you're after. Now there are a few more controls we have not looked at yet in the auto layout properties and that's the padding. So let's say that I had a background color on this frame. Let's add a fill color. Let's make it something like, I don't know, a dark green or maybe a lime green and say, cool, I like that. I'm gonna round the corners a little bit and that's great, but I would really like for those icons to be pushed in from the edges a little bit so I had a margin and they're not butting up against the edge of the frame. Well, that's exactly what padding is for. So I have horizontal padding and vertical padding. And if I click and increase this, that will create a buffer on the edges. So if I change this to 25 and 25, now there's a 25 pixel border or margin all the way around the frame. And if I needed even more precise control, I could expand this out to have individual padding for every edge. So you don't have to have uniform padding by any means. And you can even click and drag this interactively just like the spacing between icons. All of this is adjustable after the fact. That was set to auto though, so I'll undo. But that's how you adjust the padding and bring in the content from the edges of the parent frame. I didn't actually need that. I want it to be uniform. So I'm gonna set these all back to 25 by 25. But those are the basics of auto layout. And I think once you start using this, you're gonna miss having it inside of Illustrator. So get in there, try this out for yourself and see how it works. And then we're gonna move on to the next lesson where we create something a little bit more complicated. And that's auto layout. I hope you enjoyed that preview of Figma for Motion Designers. The whole course is just over two hours long and it gets you up to speed with everything you need to know about Figma as a motion designer. Don't miss out on the launch sale and get the course for 20% off for the rest of November, plus that bonus lesson on advanced components. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.